This is Twit. Asus's ProArt PA32 UCX monitor, 1,200 nits and a thousand zone backlight. You know, that's I, staggering. <laughs> yeah, I, I started on one side of Asus, and they were, I don't know if you visited them, but they were in multiple suites. By the time I got to their like professional and like uh, content creator suite, where I saw this monitor, I was blown away by 512 zones in one of the gaming right. monitors. And then I saw this, and I... I just stood there kind of with my mouth open for a while, just watching this beautiful 4K footage they had of like scenery and like trees right. and beaches and things. And it's, there is a depth to, there's a kind of magic to, to really, really good full array local dimming when it has this many zones mm -hmm. that it's, it's, it's different from OLED. And I have an OLED television, right? but it's, it's a different kind of a thing. Like it's, and this has the capability of, far exceeding the HDR 1000 spec in mold. I mean, it had in the color depth and as well as the backlight and the 1200 nit peak brightness is pretty staggering, especially on this 32 inch display. Yeah. But, you know, companies using these very small LED individual LED lights directly behind the screen, which actually reminded me a lot of, the like LG Infinia stuff mm -hmm. from way back in like 2009, 2010. And that was right. what I, I was, I was lamenting the death of the full array local dimming system when edge lighting kind of took over and it was like the race to who, who could have the thinnest television. And it was basically considered too expensive because consumers didn't really understand what the benefit was. And the TVs were a little bit thicker when you have a direct backlighting system. So, right. But HDR has brought it back. I have HDR to thank for restoring my absolute favorite display technology. And I've seen displays that look pretty good that were limited to maybe a dozen zones where you can at right. least um, control like corner lighting and things and, and dim sections of the screen. But this right. was, it, it feels almost like it's pinpoint control over the light when you have that many zones. And a thousand zones on a 32 inch screen is huge. I've, no, I've it's, it's let me let me put this into context for a second. You know, I think it was Vizio had a new a couple of years ago. Robert and I thought that um, you know, basically you can light a monitor from the edge, or you can put you know LEDs behind it, and to have the more zones you have, more granular the control you have, right? And that's what's part of what's different and what the yeah. advantage of OLED is because you can control individual pixels. So. We were, I was going to say, there's a the new Vizio, I want to say, is a 65-inch television with 480 zones. And I was absolutely blown away with the idea of a television that big with 480 zones. So we're talking more than twice as many zones in a television, or excuse me, a monitor that's about a quarter of the size of that. So this is an astonishing amount of light control for a screen this size. Um, I mean, moving in this direction, Hisense had an interesting... Uh, Robert was talking about this. We were talking about some of the, the, the best televisions that came out at CES this year. And Robert was talking about an experiment at Hisense. That there were, apparently, there were actually engineers from other television companies openly coming up with measuring instruments to test and take pictures. And just and the Hisense people were apparently just sitting there kind of beaming. And, and <laughs> what they did was they took a 1080p panel and laminated it to a, a 4K panel, a 4K HDR panel, and used the 1080p uh, LCD as the backlighting. So there was one LCD pixel from the 1080p panel to light up each of the, or four pixels of each of uh, the 4K panel in front of it. And it's kind of a, uh, a wild concept, but it's again, it's it's not OLED, it's not individual pixel control, but it's you know two million seventy three thousand six hundred uh, discrete zones for a four K monitor, um, it, which is ridiculous and amazing, and I don't know if it's ever going to ship, but to have that level of one that amount of brightness, which is pretty staggering, um, and two, you know, I mean, that's that's that's. Uh, did, did they have like a basic HDR one thousand uh, rating, or were they just kind of, you know, it's just it's a, it's brighter than anything we've seen in this size. That level of backlighting gives an extraordinary control over how the monitor looks. I mean, I I want to go find it now because I'm fascinated. 
Yeah, uh, I, yeah, it does have the Vesa 1000. They said they exceeded the spec. The the spec okay. I think was actually shown, like the the logo. But yeah, I mean, you do have to see it because it. You can only sort of try to think about what that many zones would look like on that small of a screen. But like you're saying, I mean, the more pinpoint light control you have, and it's it's reminds me of what Sony did with their Z9 TV. I think that was a couple of years ago now when that was introduced. Right where you just have an insane amount of light. Basically, they have a low-resolution display made of just white light behind the LCD. And right. the two are creating the same image at the same time, and the lower-resolution image is providing the luminance. And essentially, at that point, the LCD is just doing chroma mm -hmm. because it is just filtering light. And the result is just staggering. Right. And it's... I. I hesitate to uh i mean i don't know the retail pricing and i'm sure it's probably going to be up there because it's a professional monitor let's face it it's a sure. pro art monitor and it's it just the amount of money that probably went into r&d right it, it would not be unusual for a monitor like this to be four to six thousand dollars especially depending on the level of, of sophistication and the calibration um, yes exactly and for them to so, be targeting uh like photographers and videographers mm -hmm. then I, I don't I don't think that it's a price that especially if you're creating HD content like HDR content I should mm -hmm. say like this this is you know close to that professional display where it can do right 1000 plus brightness and you have that kind of color accuracy and uh, black level control so it's pretty interesting to look at um, Man, I, I, you know, micro LEDs, uh, you know, they're showing up all over CS this year behind back panels uh, in products uh, from places like Corsair and other places is a very tiny, you know, it looks like a, a tiny, it looks like somebody imagine sort of staring at a screen door really closely or the pixels on your screen and, you know, having several hundred LEDs packed into a square inch and you kind of get the idea of what's going on here. It gives them a lot of brightness, very different package a lot of granular control. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see where this technology shows up uh, and, uh, and how, it, uh, how it influences things moving forward.